Hello and welcome to the Airline Business Podcast, discussing key news and trends in the global airline sector. This time, airline crisis deepens as states across the globe counter the coronavirus pandemic by closing borders, resulting in massive cuts in airline capacity. In this Airline Business Pop-Up Podcast, we look at IATA's latest projections that the crisis will wipe $250 billion from airline revenues this year. Joining me as ever is uh, my airline business uh, co-host, uh, Lewis Harper. Hi, Graham. How, how are you? Yes. Well, it's it's definitely uh, definitely different and very strange. How are you doing, Lewis? Of course, we are separated. We are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing okay. Obviously, uh, I think before we kick off, it's important to say obviously our thoughts are with everyone directly and indirectly impacted by this. Um, obviously, we know uh, in the airline industry, a lot of people are losing their jobs or and in the wider aerospace industry as well but also under the threat of losing their jobs so yes yeah, uh, we've worn out the word unprecedented i think already but it, it certainly is a, a, a really tough time for for so many people at the moment but um but yeah there's still a, obviously um <laughs> since the last pod there's, there's a lot to talk about isn't there it it is and i think in in, in our last pod we were talking about the things were sort of getting getting serious it was uh, you know around that point that that parts of Europe were really starting to be to be hit by by the outbreak and it, you know I think clearly now that, that it's a fully global issue and and the, the speed with which it is spread and, and the reactions of, of government has governments have spread to counter it is uh, extraordinary it is so we we as you say the last time we spoke it was um uh, still more kind of felt like uh, an issue for, for Asia, although it was obviously beginning to impact um, Italy. And obviously since then, um, Europe has essentially become the, the, the epicentre of, of the outbreak. Um, so as a result of that, yeah, we, we've, we've seen um, Europe sort of becoming the, the, the region that is most impacted in terms of connectivity, I think. And, and figures we've seen today from IATA kind of bear that out. Um, we have been obviously on flightglobal.com, which is um, running as usual, full of all, all the latest news and analysis on this. Where we've seen you know, airlines across the region really getting to the point now where where very few of them are are operating any flights at all. Really, I think it's fair to say. It's. I mean, you, you're looking at the low cost carriers, though the, the the big giant. You know, Ryanair is virtually not operating any flights at all. EasyJet virtually none. Wiz has talked about, uh, which is operating about 15% of its um, schedules, but it's warning, you know, that, uh, I think it described a distinct possibility that it would be fully grounded. You know, and these are big, big operations. And they're, and they're operators who, who fly multiple countries, multiple markets, and it just shows, mm. you know, the extent to which it has become a, um, a you know, a wider issue. Yeah, and then into obviously other markets in in. North America, um, I don't think connectivity isn't down quite as, as severely, but um, it's kind of feels like it's heading that way. So there is still a bit more kind of domestic um, mm. activity in, in, in the US, um, some in Canada as well. Obviously, in, in Asia, Asia Pacific, we've um, we're seeing um, a lot of this obviously is being driven by the, the how the virus has spread. So um, it's it's very much um, hitting Europe and the US hard after hitting Asia earlier on, but of course we're also seeing the impact of people whose home is in the Asia Pacific region now returning from from regions where where there's um, very high cases of of coronavirus, which is again causing a, a slight spike in in cases back in um, Asia Pacific. So um, and you know the, the impact goes all the way. From where we are to, to Australia, obviously you've seen Qantas um, with huge cuts to services. New Zealand is essentially shutting down for, for four weeks, and and yeah, in, in Asia markets again, uh, India, which all sorts of dynamics playing out there. It doesn't quite have the connectivity with China that some markets have, but there's obviously still a huge um, airline market that's starting to have an impact on you know grounded domestic flights there. So th- there really isn't anywhere to look and at the moment um covering it we're, we're we do our best to kind of give the wider picture um 
But unfortunately, that wider picture is increasingly that it's kind of easier to talk about where there are flights rather than yeah. Uh, where there aren't, I think. And for a little while, you, you know, there were there were signs that some, you know, Latin America maybe wasn't as as heavily impacted. Or mm. Middle East, Africa, Latin America, we've seen lots of lots of action. Etihad and uh, Emirates will uh, suspend flights shortly with the travel travel ban in the UAE. And um, in Africa, we've seen several carriers um, in, uh, and states um, grounding their their operations for the same reason. So, it is. Extraordinary times. You referenced it a bit earlier. Um, IATA have, you know, they're almost now providing weekly briefings on the uh, on the status. And um, mm. today, you know, the scale of losses or, or the scale of lost revenues, at least that the industry faces, has it has stepped up once again. It has. So I think last time we did a pod, we were still talking about IATA's um, figures from earlier in March. Um, but by that point, I think we already knew they were looking um, looking uh, optimistic, I think, given how quickly the situation was changing. So, yeah, IATA has put out a new projection. So it's more than double kind of the, the, the worst case scenario that it put out earlier in March. So it's just around uh, impact on passenger revenues of $250 billion this year. Let's put that in context, essentially saying that um, revenues this year, based on the scenario they're looking at, would be down 44% on 2019 revenues. And obviously their projection for 2020 back in December was that, yeah, the, the industry would see kind of a not, not huge, but fairly healthy increase in revenues from 2019. So we've gone from that to, to something where, yeah, as I say, 44% down on around a 38% drop in in traffic measured in RPKs. Um, obviously, that's exacerbated by yield pressure. So even amid a partial or full recovery, you know, the, the, I think there's a perception that it'd be difficult to get yields back to where they were anytime soon. So yeah, uh, uh, a much more, uh, what feels like now, a much more realistic outlook um, from IATA based on what we know. Um, a few looking at the presentation, which um, we've just got hold of, an important statistic here, I guess, markets with severe restrictions cover 98% of global passenger revenue. So we were just trying to talk through kind of the global picture. And, um, and uh, you know, as I say, th th that's why it's probably easier to talk about where there aren't um, kind of either quarantines for arriving passengers, travel bans or or full border closures. So, um, so yeah, that, that's, um, that's where we are. So a much um, tougher outlook for the industry. Um, and I think um, I think quite a lot of the the focus has. I mean, IATA is really you've probably sensed it. Like other airline associations and and people spoken to, the underlying message is airlines need urgent action because they are you know as a cash flow for them is is going to be seriously under pressure. That's right. We've talked a lot, obviously, about how despite the industry being overall quite profitable, um, a lot of and the vast majority of airlines. Um, and I ought to point this out, I kind of, you know, might have enough cash to divide two or three months without operating um, many services. But beyond that point, it's it's pretty bleak. So as you say, a key point in what IATA's messaging it continues to be is that um, if governments want airlines to be servicing the, the, their countries, when the restrictions are lifted and when, when things are looking a lot more positive, then they do need to step in. And there is evidence of, of, of that happening. And um, we, again, a difficult thing to, to follow because um, depending on country, it won't necessarily be that there'll be an airline specific rescue package. It, it may be that there's a package of measures for businesses in a particular country that will make the, the, the situation easier. Obviously, salaries are a huge, you know, staff costs are a huge part of this. So, you know, we know in the UK where we are that there are, the, the government has is bringing in um, an initiative that essentially covers 80% of, of salaries for staff that would otherwise be let go, um, that kind of thing. In the US, there is a specific, possibly, uh, um, aid package for airlines, um, even though, <laughs> curiously, some carriers have said they don't necessarily need it. But the, the, the messaging for IATA is really, yes, that essentially uh, the industry is going to be very, very much smaller if... Um, if, if governments don't um, step up and, and 
and give airlines that that aid to get them through um, to cover their costs essentially while while revenue is is zero <laughs> um, in a lot of and, cases. And I think the there was a nar- narrative within the industry, you know, for the last year, eighteen months, maybe longer, of of uh, some you know pretty high profile airline failures. That remains, you know, in people in people's minds. It, it, in that there are some carriers, you know, some extremely profitable and successful groups, but a lot of carriers which are. Um, were already under pressure and had less, probably less time than others to um, to bridge the gap. Yes, and I think in that context as well, an important point I are to made is that with other when we've had pandemics before, they haven't come with a global economic recession uh, immediately afterwards. So there has been a V-shaped recovery where you know essentially the problem was that there was a pandemic and that meant. You know, SARS, for example, were had a huge impact on traffic in, in 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 China, but because that went away fairly quickly, in the context of what we're facing now, I think it didn't have that kind of global economic impact, which creates just another level of of challenge. So, you know, it's all very well if you were a carrier that was already like we've seen in Europe a lot, as you as you say, um, on the fringes and struggling. Um, it's all very well getting through the next three months with some government aid. But if, and we really hope it does, obviously, if, even if the industry starts to bounce back sooner rather than later, those carriers are, are likely to be facing, um, you know, very harsh economic conditions sort of, you know, in line with what we saw in the, possibly in line with what we saw in the kind of global financial crisis um, in the late um, 2000s. So, there's a lot to think about, and I'm sure when governments are thinking about the aid, they're um, they might supply or might not. That that will very much be in the thinking, and that as the as I say, IATA were keen to to make that point in their their reporting of what's going on. And I guess it is bleak, and um, mm. may yet get bleaker. Are there? I, I mean, there are some, you know, I guess really small notes of optimism. Uh, the oil price we discussed this before but mm. the, the oil price having uh having fallen even further provides some level of yeah. respite i guess it's, it's not insignificant but it, it's nowhere near i think um on the i article they're talking about you know the the all relief from lower oil prices may be you know, offset maybe a quarter of what airlines might be might be losing in some cases as a result of what's going on but yeah, the numbers we're talking about mean that, you know, it's obviously helpful and, and certainly for carriers that, you know, some of the bigger European carriers, for example, bigger US carriers who do have um, a decent liquidity situation, they, they that certainly is going to be a big help to, to, to seeing such a drop in revenues. But so, yeah, there is a positive there. I think um, one thing I took away from and talking about the positives as well from the IR to forecast, they're kind of... Um, forecast is basically based on a three-month lockdown and it's forecast going into kind of third quarter and fourth quarter of this year on that basis is bad but um it's certainly encouraging that they may for example in the fourth quarter they're only they're looking at capacity being down 10 percent globally across the board based on their current outlook i think in a lot of cases certainly personally i think i'd take that now i think if i if i knew that was definitely going to be the case because um you don't have to read much around what's going on to know that you know there are uncertainties in in both directions really whether that be things could get better quicker or things could go on much longer but um but yeah and also in in specific markets uh we look at china so in the chinese domestic market uh, a lot of caveats around this but certainly i are were keen to point out that they're already seeing some improvements there so so i think in february Capacity was down about 50%. We're looking at figures now in March down about 30% year on year. Um, yields are improving. I are to put some figures out on that. Um, the demand is, is 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 getting better. So we're looking at a sort of 60% in terms of load factors in that market. And yeah, the, the generally, the, um, Brian Pierce, the IR to the chief economist, said you know, they are getting reports in that that market is improving. So some good news there. Obviously, IR are very keen to point out that. The caveat is that that picture isn't being reflected in many other places. But um, given that China was obviously naturally first hit by this, 
it's encouraging to see that the market might be starting to bounce back. Obviously, um, we know that China's got the space to have a huge domestic market. There are challenges elsewhere. And I think we know because a lot of what's going on involves borders being shut down, which makes it impossible to fly to other countries. Um, for operators who don't have that big domestic market, um, again, I don't think there's much point in looking or guessing what's going to happen too far down the line um, in terms of specifics. But certainly an interesting trend to watch might be whether some of the carriers that are able to serve maybe intra-European, for example, or as we've seen in the North American markets, um, where they don't have to cross national borders or where those national borders are slightly um, less significant, like in the EU, for example, there may be um, a path to recovery slightly there. I think the the, the international flights are going to be the, the truly international flights are possibly where when you start to see recovery there, I think we know we're, um, we're on the right path. But but yeah, the, as I say, there's we're um, um, the, it's nice to focus on a positive story in China, but obviously caveat, clear caveat is that um, certainly in Europe and the US, um, we're heading into a time where cases are rising and deaths from it are rising, unavoidable to acknowledge that really. And that um, I think the time and the place to kind of look beyond that is, is probably um, a while away yet. But, um, yes, I, exactly as you said. It still seems remarkably early in this unknown journey that uh, that, that we're having to, to go through. We will find out a bit more on um, Asia and the Chinese market um, after the break when we speak to um, Flight Global's Asia editor, Greg Walden. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of the Airline Business Podcast by subscribing via your app of choice. While the impact of the coronavirus outbreak in Asia was initially centred on China, it is now being seen across the region. Down the line is Flight Global's Asia Pacific editor, Greg Waldron. Greg, this is a challenging time for Asian operators. Indeed it is, Graham. You know, when this first emerged in January, the major feeling was that it was going to be a repeat of SARS, a SARS-2, if you will. Um, SARS-2, mm -hmm. of course, originated in China, and it had a major impact on airlines such as Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines. And it was seen as this real cathartic moment in the Asian airline industry. But that was in 2003. Um, we didn't have we didn't have low cost carriers at that time. The world was far less globalized. And while it was a major event for the airlines in the region, it largely didn't affect the world. But um, what we've seen this time, of course, is we saw major capacity cuts starting in January and through February. And now, you know, with the virus going global, we've seen pretty much every airline in the region all but shut down. Even major airlines like Singapore Airlines and Cathay are running skeleton services. You've seen quarantines in key markets around the region. You've seen all sorts of travel restrictions coming in. Domestic travel is going to be stopped in India, for example. But the only bright spot is, ironically maybe, that um, the traffic is start starting to get back on stream in China, although at a very reduced rate, because China seems to have been able to stamp it out to a very severe lockdown. China's interesting, as, as it was obviously the hardest hit market uh, right at the start. But there are some signs of a return, if not to normality, but some kind of air travel activity. Yeah, certainly. They haven't um, restored any international flights, but we understand that about 40 to 50 percent of domestic air traffic is starting up again. And so, you know, it is slowly um, getting back on its feet. And that's, but that's of course, after very draconian um, um, restrictions. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is on a, a normal month, China generally accounts for a quarter of new aircraft deliveries on a global basis. Um, but there were zero aircraft delivered to Chinese airlines in February, which is astonishing. But I think it really highlights, you know, the impact um, that this is having on, uh, has had on China and has had on the aerospace and aviation industry. And the point you made earlier, Greg, is an important one because uh, compared to when SARS happened originally, the Asian market is, uh, is, is far more connected and, and much larger now, isn't it? Oh, certainly. I mean, if you look back to the time of SARS, I mean, Air Asia, I think, might have had just a couple of 737s. I mean, nobody heard of uh, Tony Fernandez. Jetstar Asia had yet to arrive in Singapore. Scoot was, you know, years. Scoot and Tiger Air didn't exist. So really, it was a very traditional airline game at that time. It was just purely the legacy carriers. 
Um, at that time, you know, um, it was very much wide body traffic throughout the region, you know, very few narrow bodies, you know, flying Asian routes, even like short routes in Southeast Asia were, you know, big aircraft. So, yeah, it was a very different world. And, um, of course, social media didn't exist then as well. And I think social media has um, done a lot to, you know, exacerbate people's fears about this crisis. So, you know, with this crisis, you know, it's not just SARS-2, it's gone beyond it to become a much more global crisis, really. And that is something I can't say that we expected in Asia before it went global like this. It's, it's a real black swan event for the world. And with China and India, you have two huge domestic markets. Does that provide some kind of hope that even if international markets take longer to recover, there could be some significant national connectivity, uh, perhaps as a first step? Well, certainly, like you're seeing that in China, again, you know, about this back up to about 40, 50 percent of normal capacity. But there's also concern in China that the virus is um, coming back to the country. You know, Chinese citizens who are overseas in places like Europe and the states that are being badly affected are flying back and bringing the virus with them. So there are real concerns in China that there might be a second outbreak. And if that happens, even if air traffic has been recovering, that could certainly halt and probably reverse uh, that trend. Um, as for India, India has just recently, I think like yesterday, shut down its domestic traffic, or said they will. I think it's going to be shut down on the 25th. So all domestic services are going to be shut down within India. You know, we'll see how long. That's going to go for a few weeks, I believe. Domestic services have all but stopped in um, the Philippines. Vietnam, they haven't ceased, but basically Vietnam is in a very, you know, a deep, pretty intense state of lockdown. You know, so really, I think it's going to be a long time before we're anywhere back to anything remotely resembling normalcy on the domestic in countries where there's a big domestic market the international is going to take even longer than that one part of the business where there is still some activity is the air cargo market um, which has historically been a, a big market for asia pacific carriers is that providing an area of potential opportunity for uh, asian operators I'm not sure it'd be, you could call it an opportunity, but it does offer a degree of relief from the utter lack of passenger demand we're experiencing right now. And you've seen some of their carriers in the region deploying um, passenger aircraft just so they can avail themselves of the um, belly hold capacity. I mean, I think belly hold, even in, in normal times, belly hold, I believe, is about half of the freighter capacity deployed by Singapore Airlines. It's a very high percentage of that capacity. So. You're seeing airlines using their normal passenger aircraft without passengers but to carry cargo because the fact that there's so many fewer passenger flights just means that the belly hold space has collapsed, which means that, of course, airlines are you know, struggling to fill that uh, lack of uh, cargo capacity. Greg, I think this is going to take quite some time to sort out. Thanks for your help. Great talking to you, Graham. Have a great day. So that's all for this time. You can find links to the stories we have referenced, including details of IATA's latest projections for the industry, in the podcast notes. And you can keep up to date with all the latest on how airlines are responding to the coronavirus outbreak at the new look flightglobal.com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review and don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you again next time.